Hi class! After knowing the various components of a curriculum design, which are the intended learning outcomes or the desired learning outcomes, the subject matter or content with the references, the teaching and learning methods, and finally the assessment and or evaluation, we are now going to proceed to the approaches to curriculum design. But before we go further, let's deal with the types of curriculum design models. There are many ways of looking at curriculum and designing one. For our own purposes, let us focus on the most widely used examples. We have three, the subject-centered design, the learner-centered design, and problem-centered design. Let's start with the subject-centered design. This is a curriculum design that focuses on the content of the curriculum. This corresponds mostly to the textbook because textbooks are usually written based on the specific subject or course. So, gaya ng mga nakasanayan natin class, school hours are allocated to different school subjects such as science, mathematics, language, social studies, physical education, etc. This is the practice that we have here in the Philippines. So, most of the school using this kind of structure and curriculum design aim for excellence in the specific subject discipline content. Subject-centered curriculum design has also some variations which are focused on the individual subject specific discipline and combination of subjects or disciplines which are a broad field or interdisciplinary. Subject-centered design is further divided into four. The first one we have subject design. Subject design curriculum is the oldest and so far the most familiar design for teachers, parents, and other laymen. In fact, class, marami pa rin mga teachers ang nag implement ng ganitong klaseng design until now. According to the advocates, subject design is an advantage because it is easy to deliver. Textbooks are written and support instructional materials are commercially av available. It means class na, na maraming available sa bookstores and marami ding available sa internet. Teachers are familiar with the format because they were educated using also the design. In the Philippine educational system class, the number of subjects in the elementary education is fewer than in the secondary level. In college naman, the number of subjects also differs according to the degree programs being pursued. For each subject, a curriculum is being designed. So, iba yung curriculum ng Ed 11 sa Ed 121. Iba din sa Ed 12. Mas lalong iba class yung curriculum natin sa BE Ed Gen Ed doon sa BS Civil Engineering. However, the drawback of this design is that sometimes learning is so compartmentalized. It views the learners as a passive, passive actors in the educative process. It stresses so much on the content and forgets about the student's natural tendencies, interests, and experiences. So because focus masyado doon sa subject, um, neglect class yung mismong um, potentials no, and talents ng mga learners. And because of that, they are being restricted from performing, no, from being active in the process itself. So this is a traditional approach to teaching and learning. Second, we have discipline design. This curriculum design model is related to the subject design. However, while subject design centers only on the cluster of content, discipline design focuses on academic disciplines. Discipline refers to specific knowledge learned through a method which the scholars use to study a specific content of their fields. Students in history should learn the subject matter like historians. Students in biology should learn how the biologists learn. And so, with the students in mathematics, 
who should learn how mathematicians learn. In the same manner, teachers should teach how the scholars in the discipline will convey the particular knowledge. Discipline design model of curriculum is often used in college but not in the elementary or secondary levels. So from the subject-centered curriculum class, curriculum moves higher to a discipline when the students are more mature and are already moving towards their career path or disciplines science, mathematics, psychology, humanities, history, and others. So to make the long story short class, Discipline design is far broader compared to the subject design. Third, we have correlation design. Coming from a core, correlated curriculum design links separate subject designs in order to reduce fragmentation. Subjects are related to one another and still maintain their identity. For example, class, English literature and social studies correlate well in the elementary level. In two subjects, while history is being studied, different literary pieces during the historical period are also being studied. The same is true when science becomes the core. Mathematics is related to it, as they are taken in chemistry, physics, and biology. So that's why class, may mga topics tayo sa science na Kasama din doon sa subject natin na history. May mga topics din tayo sa mathematics na inuulit pagpunta natin ng physics or chemistry. And the same thing is true kapag yung subject natin is literature na pinagsasabihan din natin doon sa history. Fourth one, we have broad field design or interdisciplinary. So, I know, class, that you are familiar with the word interdisciplinary. Broad field design or interdisciplinary is a variation of the subject-centered design. This design was made to cure the compartmentalization of the separate subjects and integrate the contents that are related to one another. For example, class, the subjects geography, Economics, political science, anthropology, sociology, and history are fused into one subject called social studies. Language arts will include grammar, literature, linguistics, spelling, and composition. Sometimes class, this design is called holistic curriculum. Broad fields draw around themes and integration. Interdisciplinary design is similar to thematic design where a specific theme is identified and all other subject areas revolve around the theme if subject center design is the traditional one the learner center design upholds progressivism if you can still remember progressivism views the learner as the center of the educative process this emphasis is very strong in the elementary level because learners in the elementary level or more dependent compared to high school and college learners. Although in high school, the subject or content has become the focus, and in the college level, the discipline is the center, both levels still recognize the importance of the learner in the curriculum. Here are some examples of curriculum designs which are learner-centered. The first one we have child-centered design. This design is often attributed to the influence of John Dewey, Rousseau, Pestalozzi, and Frobel. This curriculum design is anchored on the needs and interests of the child. The learner is not considered a passive individual like in the subject design, but one who engages with his or her environment. One learns by doing, or one learns with experience. Learners actively create, construct meanings and understanding as viewed by the constructivists. I hope class that you can still remember constructivism too. Now, in the child-centered design, learners interact with the teachers and the environment. Thus, there is a collaborative effort 
on both sides to plan lessons, select content, and do activities together. Learning is a product of the child's interaction with the environment. It means, class, that in this design, the learners are active participants of the educative process. No? So, the classroom in this design class is democratic. Students can state their opinion and more importantly, their opinions and suggestions are considered by the teachers. Second, we have experience-centered design. This design is similar to the child-centered design. Although the focus remains to be the child, experience-centered design believes that the interests and needs of learners cannot be pre-planned. Ibig sabihin class, hindi pwedeng ma-predict. So, the experiences of the learners become the starting point of the curriculum or the main basis of the curriculum. With this, school environment is left open and free. Learners are made to choose from various activities that the teacher provides. There is no uniformity class in the activities provided by the teacher. No, because again, the teacher cannot predict kung ano yung gusto ng bata. That's why the teacher provides differentiated activities. The learners are empowered to shape their own learning from the different opportunities given by the teacher. So in a school where experience-centered curriculum is provided, different learning centers are found. Time is flexible and children are free to make options. Activities revolve around different emphasis such as touching, feeling, imagining, constructing, relating, and others. The emergence of multiple intelligence theory blends well with experience-centered design curriculum. If you can still remember class, the multiple intelligence theory ni Howard Gardner. So there are nine intelligences. No? And kindly review on this matter. Third, we have humanistic design. The key influence in this curriculum design is Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers. First and foremost, Abraham Maslow. I hope, class, that you can still remember him and his theory about the hierarchy of needs. In his hierarchy of needs class, the one at the peak is our need for self-actualization. And this explains that the person who achieves this level is accepting of self, others, and nature. A simple, spontaneous, and natural is open to different experiences, possesses empathy and sympathy towards the less fortunate among the many others. The person can achieve this state of self-actualization later in life, but has to start the process while still in school. Ano pala yung naipaprovide ng school sa atin? Remember, school provides education. And in education, there is learning. Learning class actually is meant to be shared with other people. But what can you share if you don't know it to begin with? Bano? So, mas maiintindihan mo yung nature ng self-actualization mo if you know exactly the concepts behind it. Second, we have Carl Rogers. He believes that a person can enhance self-directed learning by improving self-understanding, the basic attitude to guide behavior. So, understanding the self-class. No? Understanding the self is what Carl Rogers upholds. No? So, you can only understand other people if first and foremost you understand the nature of your self. Now, in humanistic curriculum design, the development of self is the ultimate objective of learning. Yun nga. It stresses the whole person and the integration of thinking, feeling, and doing. It considers the cognitive, affective, and psychomotor domains to be interconnected and must be addressed in the curriculum. It stresses the development of positive self-concept 
and interpersonal skills. Finally, problem-centered design. Generally, this design draws on social problems, needs, interests, and abilities of the learners. Various problems are given emphasis. These are those that center in life situations, contemporary life problems, areas of living, and many others. In this curriculum class, content cuts across subject boundaries and must be based on the needs, concerns, and abilities of the students. So two examples are given for problem-centered design curriculum. We have life situation design and core problem design. Life situations design is unique in a way that its contents are organized in ways that allow students to clearly view problem areas. It uses the past and the present experiences of learners as a means to analyze the basic areas of living. As a starting point, the pressing immediate problems of the society and the students' existing concerns are utilized. Ibig sabihin class, yung mga challenges na kinakaharap ng mga estudyante sa araw-araw na pumumuhay nila ay are being related to the general problems of the society. Now, the connection of subject matter to real situations increases the relevance of the curriculum. Because, of course, mas nakaka-relate yung mga estudyante. At kapag mas nakaka-relate sila, mas na nakaka-grasp sila ng understanding. On the other hand, we have core problem design. It centers on general education and the problems are based on the common human activities. The central focus of the core design includes common needs, problems, and concerns of the learners. So those are some examples of curriculum designs. Actually class, marami pa sana. Pero it's up to you if you're going to pursue further research. At this juncture, we are going to proceed to the approaches to curriculum design. So there are three. The child or learner-centered approach, the subject-centered approach, and the problem-centered approach. The child or learner-centered approach class is based on the underlying philosophy that the child or the learner is the center of the educational process. It means that the curriculum is constructed based on the needs, interests, purposes, and abilities of the learners. The curriculum is also built upon the learner's knowledge, skills, previous learnings, and potentials. So learners' class can choose which learning center to engage in with different resources. So, learners are presented with different options no, by the teachers and the school in general uh, as a response to the child or learner-centered approach to curriculum design. Second, we have subject-centered approach. So this is anchored in a curriculum design which prescribes separate distinct subjects for every educational level. The basic education, higher education, or vocational technical education. So this approach considers the following principles class. The first one, the primary focus is the subject matter. So very content focused sa class the mastery of the subject matter. Second, the emphasis is on bits and pieces of information which may be detached from life. Third, the subject matter serves as a means of identifying problems of living. Fourth, learning means accumulation of content or knowledge. That's why class, nagpa-practice or kasali sa approach na ito yung drill no mastery ng concepts memorization no fifth we have teacher's role is to dispense the content when we say dispense the content class is ibigay no ibigay yung content ipasa sa learners no so for example class ang school na merong ganitong klase na approach sa curriculum design no, aims to produce the best graduates in the school district. 
So every learner must excel in all academic subjects to be on top of every academic competition. So the higher the level of cognitive intelligence is, the better the learner. Hence, the focus of learning is mastery of the subject matter in terms of content. So memorization nga and real or important learning skills. Third, we have problem-centered approach. This approach is based on a design which assumes that in the process of living, children experience problems. Thus, problem-solving enables the learners to become increasingly able to achieve the complete or total development as individuals. Class, I would like to emphasize this one. When we say problem-solving, it does not only refer to mathematics problems okay so it also involves life situation problems no it involves um yung mga problema na na encounter natin in our daily life no so because of this class if the school has this kind of approach the school believes that a learner should be trained to solve real life problems that come about because of the needs interests and abilities of the learners no so they are exposed learners are exposed to various problems and of course um they are required or they are encouraged to find solutions to these problems so that in the future kung makaka-encounter sila ng bigger problems they are already trained and um adjusting or adapting to the situation won't be that difficult na that's all class. I hope that you learned something from this learning episode. See you next time in our discussion. Goodbye and thank you.